Hello my friends. My name is Bot Mathematician, and this is Holomancer. Today we have prepared a list of the most effective classes, and popular decks. To do this, we followed the meta for almost 3 weeks, studied meta sources, and took an analysis of decks from popular resources. Based on all of this data, we prepared a list of the most effective decks for each class. As expected, the nerf did not fundamentally change the matter. We didn't see a rise in popularity of the new Ristak Index. Although the balance of power has changed, there have not been many surprises. The popularity of Baku the Moon Eater continues its terrifying growth after the balance update, and is already approaching 25%, which means that every fourth deck in the matter is an odd deck. So you all already know, the developers have decided to move Baku and Gan to the Hall of Fame. I think the developers made the right decision. What do you think? What should have been done with this cards? We created a YouTube poll, please vote and share your opinions in the comments. Let's start with a short look at the popularity of classes in the metagame, and determine the changes that have occurred since the nerf. Hunter is still the leader, but he suffered the greatest loss in popularity. He has lost almost 6% popularity since the nerf. On the other hand, Priest, Mage and Warrior have found themselves new allies among the players, and have risen in popularity. Now let's go to the list of the most efficient classes and decks. We begin with Shaman. Shaman looks buried, with a play rate nearing 1% at legend rank. The last bastion of competitiveness is even Shaman. But even this deck continues to see little play following the recent balance changes. The loss of Flametongue Totem reduced the power level of even Shaman significantly. In spite of everything, even Shaman is still the only effective deck of the class. This archetype has 0.5% popularity. We found the best available build of this deck. This version costs 10,820 dust, and has a win rate of 57%, but you must understand that this percentage comes from the results from the lowest levels in the game. Shaman has had very few new ideas or interesting decks emerge over the past year, and the few that did emerge got nerfed. Thrall desperately needs new mechanics in the next Hearthstone year. In spot 8 is Druid. Druid is in a similar spot, as before the balance changes. The class has very low popularity, and the most used Druid archetype is Mill Druid. Thankfully, Druid is seeing new archetypes rise in popularity in the Rastak and Mata, one of which is Spiteful Druid. This archetype has 0.4% popularity. This version of the deck costs 11,280 dust, and has a win rate of 56%. In the last week, Spiteful Druid has been seeing gameplay again. This popular archetype disappeared from the game in early December, after the release of Rastakhan's Rumble. Despite the high popularity of the mill archetype, Spiteful Druid has higher win rates. Playing Spiteful Summoner reveals a spell from your deck, and then summons you a random minion that costs the same as that spell. Ultimate Infestation is the only possible target in this deck, so you're guaranteed a meaty 10 drop. Before we continue, don't miss our massive videos about research on packs. In these three videos you will find answers to the questions. What sets are most popular? What is the game's economy like? What strategy should you choose to get as many packs as possible? All links will be in the description. In 7th place is Warrior. Warrior is showing signs of recovery following the balance changes, but its rise in popularity is exclusive to non-legend ranks. At legend rank, the class has dropped in popularity. Odd Warrior has made a big comeback and instantly became the most popular and effective warrior deck. Odd Quest Warrior and Rush Warrior are also showing good results. Generally Odd Warrior has 3.4% popularity. This particular version of the deck has a win rate of 59% and costs 12,160 dust to craft. This is the most expensive deck in our list. Odd Warrior has been around for some time now, ever since Baaku the Moon Eater was added to the game. This card uses its upgraded hero power to provide you with a huge amount of late game staying power. You should be able to outlast just about anyone you encounter on the ladder. With the infusion of new dragon cards from the Rastakhan's Rumble set, Odd Warrior has even more survival and control options. The sixth position is held by Rogue. 
the rogue class is extremely diverse, so it's very hard to guess what you've run into on the ladder. The most effective archetypes are currently Pirate, Even, Death Rattle and Odd. Death Rattle is the most popular, but the Odd archetype has the best win rate. Over the past 2 weeks, Odd Rogue is regaining its popularity after the Cold Blood nerf. Odd Rogue has 1.2% popularity. This particular version of the deck has a win rate of 53% and costs 9040 dust. Odd Rogue is an aggressive deck archetype spawned from the Witchwood. This deck uses Baaku to upgrade its class hero power to a 2 halves weapon. It also makes excellent use of the Hench Clan Thug card, which gains plus 1, plus 1 each time your hero attacks. Odd Rogue's ultimate objective, like other aggressive decks, is to kill the opponent as quickly as possible. It does this by finding a good balance between attacking for face damage and efficiently removing the enemy's threats to maintain board dominance. In 5th place is Mage. Secret Odd Mage has soared to become one of the most popular and effective decks in the game post-patch. Besides this, there are two other effective archetypes, Odd Mage and Big Spell Mage. Odd Mage has 5.4% popularity. Our version of the deck costs 7940 dust, and has a win rate of 57%. Secret Odd Mage is an aggressive, tempo-oriented mage deck built around the meta staple card, Baaku the Moon Eater, which makes the mage's hero power deal 2 damage instead of 1. The upgraded hero power helps the mage take care of early minions on the board from aggressive decks. Yeah. As a result, Secret Odd Mage can sometimes assume the role of a control deck when it needs to. When it needs to be aggressive, the hero power can function as Hunter's steady shot, dealing 2 damage a turn to the opponent. Besides this, Janelai, the Dragonhawk summons Ragnaros the Fire Lord, making this deck very dangerous. Fourth place is held by Warlock. Warlock is still very diverse in its strategies, and has 3 effective archetypes, even. Kubanzu. In the early days of the new Ristakhan's Rumble expansion, Zoo Warlock fell down the rankings somewhat. Now, Zoo Warlock has made a comeback. It is the most popular Warlock deck. This archetype has 2.6% popularity. This version of deck costs 4680 dust, and has a win rate of 58%. Zoo Warlock is one of the oldest decks in Hearthstone. The deck uses powerful early game plays to take control of the board by efficiently trading with your opponent's creatures while using the life tap to keep your hand full of resources. With a lot of powerful early game drops, you can storm out into a lead early on and either overwhelm your opponent before they have a chance to respond, or close out the game with some final burst damage in the late game. In spot 3 is Priest. Priest is in the process of overtaking Hunter in popularity after the patch. Immediately after the nerf, we saw the rise of an entirely new archetype, Wall Priest. This deck quickly caught the eyes of many in the early days of the post-nerf matter, and it has been in the spotlight ever since. In general, Priest also has two other effective archetypes, Control Priest and Clone Priest, but, their popularity is much lower. Wall Priest has 7.2% popularity. This version of the deck costs 7680 dust, and has a win rate of 58%. Wall Priest is a new Hearthstone deck, but it owes a great deal to the OTK Priest. The idea with this deck, however, is to put together a stupendously sticky board of taunt minions one after another, one of which will eventually become your Divine Spirit, Inner Fire combo target. Now it's time to talk about Hunter. Hunter remains the most popular and effective class in the game. Following the balance changes, Hunter has 5 effective archetypes, Death Rattle, Midrange, Recruit, Secret, and of course, Spell Hunter. In addition, Hunter has risen in popularity at higher levels of play. Midrange Hunter has completely taken over the Legend meta, where it is more popular than any other class. In general, Midrange Hunter has 12.4% popularity. This particular version of the deck has a win rate of 57% and costs 3160 dust. This is the cheapest deck in our list. Midrange Hunter is a deck that's been popular in Hearthstone since the beginning. It has the power to take a controlling position against more aggressive opponents, yet can quickly switch to a more aggressive stance of its own when you need to finish a game against slower opponents. 
And finally, in first place is Paladin. Late game Paladin decks have nearly disappeared, with Holy Wrath, One Turn Kill, and Death Rattle Paladin, looking like obvious casualties of the equality nerf. But Paladin has three other tier 1 decks. Odd Paladin has taken over and is the most popular class archetype. It is followed by the rising secret Paladin as well as even Paladin, establishing Paladin as a strictly aggressive class. This archetype has 1.8% popularity. This version of deck costs 4780 dust and has a win rate of 58%. Secret Paladin has the highest win rate and is seeing growing interest from players. It performs quite well against priests, making it a very effective choice against some of the most popular decks in the matter. Secret Paladin is the name of a Hearthstone archetype that's sure to strike dread into the hearts of anyone who played the game competitively back in the days of the Grand Tournament. Although things don't seem quite so overpowered this time around, Secret Paladin is nevertheless looking very strong. And what do you think? Are you satisfied with new matter? We created a YouTube poll. Find the button on the screen, and please vote. Also share your opinions and your favorite effective decks in the comments. Alright, that's all for today. Thank you for being with us. And special thanks to Chris for text editing. We will meet in new videos. Good luck.